At number 28 on the iconic 100 list is the George Mikan 1948 Bowman rookie card. And here to talk about it, somebody who, like me, had this card significantly higher on this list is Ty from Sports Card Investor. Ty, when I said number 28, what happened in your mind? Uh, what happened in my mind is I went, well, eight minus two equals six, which is where I had this card on the list at number six. Big difference, um, big difference. Big difference on this. And I think this card came in uh, much lower on the, on the ranking than where I had it because when you look at George Mikan, people look at this and they go, that guy was a basketball player. You know, the running joke is that he's like, he was like an accountant or a science teacher or something. Um, big gangly six ten, tall, you know, this card has so many reasons to me why it's critically important. Um, so, so many different reasons. First of all, just in terms of pure personal nostalgia, growing up in the nineties with the Beckett price guide, every time I looked at the price guide, the basketball card that stood out was the Mikan. And I was, you know, eight, 10, 12 years old going, who's George Mikan? I don't know, but boy, do I wish I could find one of those cards at a garage sale with my mom, you know, because the, the price tag was just so huge. And so, you know, you look at that and you're like, wow, I don't, um, I don't really uh, understand it, but that's really cool. You start to unpack it more. Um, and, and again, I've looked at this so many different ways in terms of how I went about my list, but Start with the set history, 1948 Bowman. Like, I, I don't want to say it's the most important set of all time. It's not, but like, it's one of the most important sets of all time. It's the first year of Bowman. Um, the cards, simple, beautiful, the rich, saturated color background, like PMGs before PMGs, man, like red and blue uh, in the background. And then the simple picture, and it, it's like, you can see the way Mike is dribbling in this card, right? It's just like so goofy, but it fits. It captures the essence of that era of early, early basketball, right? Early basketball and first basketball cards being produced. Uh, this card is really important and iconic because it's, you know, I would say like limited enough production. I, I went through the pop reports, I think across the three big companies, PSA, BVG, SGC, you've got 442 of them on those pop reports. And it's not obviously 442 because we know there's probably been crack and resubs and crossovers and all kinds of things like that. So it's fewer than that. Um, enough of them to have to be a card that's understood, not just some like obscure, you know, 1914 pop two card, um, but the aesthetics, the notable features. And then I'm going to go to the article that I did recently for uh, BCF magazine. Mm -hmm about the curious collector and you have to start understanding like there's so many different reasons why we collect i, I did a video i mentioned that in the in the write-up i did a video uh, for sports card investor talking about 27 27 different types of collectors yep. and player collectors i remember and it. i love that and then the one i said in the article that i forgot about is just kind of the curious collector and that's the one that gets into history that just sort of like loses their way down a Wikipedia rabbit hole or a Reddit thread or a blowout forum or something like that. And you start to understand. And if you go, anybody who had this card uh, 28 or lower, or, or I chuckled and messaged you on Instagram, not even in the top 100. It's crazy. Uh, just go do some research, like just go to, and I'm not saying that condescendingly, I'm saying that as somebody who had to go do some research over time to learn about some of these iconic cards uh, and, and to understand why they're, why they're really iconic and important. But this card was simple. You don't even have the name on the front of the card. So I was, I was reflecting on this a little bit and going back through the survey. And I was like, I wonder if some people didn't vote for this card because they didn't realize it was the Mikan. Because when I clicked on the photo, right. it was just the card and not the graded slab. So you, you didn't know it was George Mikan. Some people might've like, if they're not primarily basketball card collectors, they may have clicked on it or seen it and been like, I don't know what that is. I'm going to keep going. Maybe that's a testament to it not necessarily being as iconic. We uh, can't we recognize were, it. We were really deliberate about that, by the way. The, the, like we went back and forth. Do we include the name of the card on the, on the poll or do we, you know, or on the survey or do we just leave the, leave the card? And what we landed on was if you can't, if you don't know who it is, if you don't know what the card is just by looking at it, it's probably not iconic. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the, the thing that's hard for me to digest, though, is, is what you're talking about. Like, 
it's such a historically important card and to somebody who's been in the hobby for 30 something years like i have all the same feelings that you just described yeah like, i i love i love that you talked about the beckett thing i love that you know when you were a kid you looked in beckett and you saw this highest price card and, and you never saw one growing up right probably like me i never ever saw this card i saw pictures of it yeah. i dreamed of it and even all these years later ty like i've you know i'm not trying to pat myself on the back i've owned basically all the big basketball cards that there are that there are to own i've never owned them like it and it's because it's actually like a pretty rare card yeah it's uh, it's rare in low grades it's rare it's impossible in high grades and he's the first he's the first basketball superstar he might look like an accountant you know go 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 accountants. Uh, that I, I was one for a long time. Right. And, uh, and he, he definitely like, he doesn't look like, he doesn't look like you would assume a professional basketball player would look, but he's had a lot of the basketball card records for a long time because it's such a critically important card. So you had it at six, I had it at nine, but there's a lot of big baseball cards and big football cards. And there's a lot of big cards that people had above it. I, my argument though, like people have, people have like the Jordan PMG as, as a higher card on the iconic list. They have, you know, a lot of like nineties inserts, which again, I love that's where like, that's where my jam really is to me. This is the third most iconic basketball card ever. It's, it's the Jordan. And then it's the 1980, you know, trifold card. And then it's this. And, and I guess you could make an argument for maybe like the wilt in, in there too, but like, and the and the Russell, but to me, this this is card number three. Is that kind of how you have the order? Which well? one did you have as two? Did you say? Sorry. Oh, the 1980 tops card with Bird and oh, uh, sure. Magic and, yeah. and, and Irving. Yeah. So I had I had uh, the Jordan, the Fleer Jordan at three, the Mike in at six, and then I had the I actually had the Bird, uh, the the 80 Bird Magic Julius at 17. Okay. Um, but I I just think like this card carries so much historical significance weight with it. And Mikan was no slouch, a short lived career, but a fantastic player. Uh, you know, many people would put him in the top 10 of centers. Maybe not now we've seen a few more great centers emerge in the league, but just um, that era was really important to basketball. That era was really important to, to sports cards that set was, you know, critically important. Um, and so I think just it's, it, I do think it's really, really iconic. I want to address something that you said in terms of like, if you can't recognize the card, maybe it's not that, that iconic. The one, the one like counterpoint to that is there's very, 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 there are very few collectors who understand all the different sports and non-sports who would know all of these cards, but if they hear it, they understand that it's an iconic card. And I'll give you an example. Like I'm not the biggest hockey fan. I've, I've been getting more into hockey. I really enjoy it. It's just hard for me because I love the other sports so much to find time to, to, to watch it and to get into it. Uh, I, I, I have to look at my list here and see where did I have it ranked, but I didn't, um, I don't know if I could have told you what year or if I could have mentally pictured the Bobby or 66 <laughs> before like if somebody said first of all what year is it from and second what does it look like i i've seen it before when i saw it on the list okay i was like okay i know who that is and obviously his name's on it but like the point being i think there are a lot of cards that people understand carry significance with them and especially with people who collect hockey cards and who know hockey cards to say he was a critically important player that's a critically important card um i had that one at 51 even though it's not one that is like easily recognizable or well known to me in terms of the history of the car. So I think that's important worth worth noting. But um yeah, just go unpack the the mic and uh, you probably I don't remember which which app or which issue it was of BCF mag, but um Yamwax did that uh, right. article on on chasing down the mic in. And that was an awesome, awesome story to read about just how he he went about that and the, the process and the, the pain uh that you know how how hard it was to track down the copy that he did so um that just a little, little shout out there to that too yeah he uh th thank you for the shout out uh, on the magazine i loved that piece um it made me i mean i should be really honest like i've 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 been searching for this card for a really long time we had one um before i started working at pwcc and i was still able to bid on cards here which I, I can't bid on cards here at P pwcc anymore now that i have a role here but um we had just a gorgeous copy this is probably four or five months ago 
I remember it was me and Jeremy and Eric Myers on the premiere show looking at it together. And it was like, Adam, this is the card for you. This is the one that you've been looking for. And I, I really went after it. I felt like, and I ended up being, you know, the bridesmaid was the second, second bidder on it. And I, I regret not grabbing. It was so expensive. You know, it's probably worth less now than it was then just because the whole market has come down a notch or two yeah. in that time. But, but you just, you don't see any of them. They don't pop up very often. And when they do, it's like one at a time at some, at some auction house, yep. you know, with the Jordan rookie, you'll see 10 at a time, even the star Jordan, which is a very limited card. Like it's out there. Okay. It, it, you can find it. Yeah you don't find the mic in card. It's just, it's not one that comes up. And so at some point, maybe I'll find a way to trade into it or, or, you know, or one will pop up that I'll, that I'll be able to grab. But to me, it's like, it's from a year that people don't think about from an era that people don't remember, but he's one of the most, you know, he's one of the most dominant players of all time. And it's one of the most important basketball cards of all time. And Ty, I'm super grateful that you were the, the, the person to, to cover it like you. I wish it was higher, but you know, and, and, and for our list, it is at number 28, the George Mike and rookie card. Next time we'll be, uh, we'll have card number 27 uh, and we'll cover that. We'll cover that tomorrow. And until then happy collecting.